welcome to the KJ Method, uh, October 14th, 2023 live session. Uh, we've decided to open up the live this week to students who are non-KJ Method members. Uh, hopefully you can see how we do things here. Um, and if you're struggling, that you would be um, interested in even looking at the program or coming on board. All right, here we go. So we got Philip. Philip is an agent on a listed property. His seller accepted an offer on the listing three weeks ago, but Philip is concerned that the property will not close. So he continually markets this property, clearly indicating the property is under contract but that backup offers are being accepted. So can Phillips seller accept an offer on this property? Can he accept yeah. an offer? What do yeah. you guys say? Yes, you say yeah. yes? Yes, yes. Right. And so one of the things that we do here yes. guys, is we try to figure out the answer before we even put the answers up there so that we don't get all messed up by the answers when they come up. So you guys think that he can? Is there any, would he just be able to accept it or something else? It's something else in regards to um, contingency or well, the existing or contingency. Okay, I like that. I like that. So let's yeah, put it's a contingent. Let's put the answers up here. And so you said that, yes, he can accept it. And you said it has to be something about a contingency, right? There right. you go. It's right there. Yes. If that new offer has a contingency placed in it, that it can't be accepted until the other contract is extinguished. The other one falls through. Everybody good with that? Anybody have questions? This is what we do in the live. So even if you're not a member, you took this test, do you have a question or reason you don't understand? Look at A, look at B. I have a question. You can't be nervous. Yes, go ahead. Um. Okay, so you said, yes, it can be accepted. So it's not actually accepted, like replacing the new... Um, the new, the existing contract is just on standby pretty much because of the contingency. Exactly. So like he can't accept it unless right. it has a contingency, right? So what he's essentially saying, look, I'm already in contract. I can't accept your offer unless we put a contingency in that offer. And basically the contingency is going to say what? I will accept this offer if the first one falls through. Everybody good? Make sense? All right. Let's look at the next one. Jamie is a buyer and Suzanne is a seller. They enter into a purchase and sale agreement where they're both represented by real estate agents. We're looking for buzzwords so everybody should agree that they're in a contract. Yeah. And back and forth throughout the negotiations until they settle on all the material terms. Seems good to me. Once that occurred, both parties were sent digital documents for their signature. Before closing, though, Jamie decides she doesn't want to purchase the property, and she states she's not in breach since no one followed up to obtain her actual signature. Suzanne sues her. What is the result? Basically, what's the rule here? That a um, digital signature is the same as a written document, is written, exactly. right? Everybody know what that? Yes. yes. Good with it now, KJ. So let's look for that answer. Let's look for that answer. You see what happens when we don't put the answers. We got to be able to say what it is. Then we look and we like, oh, digital signatures are the same as written ones. It's right there. All right. What often happens with you guys is that you'll get a question and you look right at the answer. You scan in the answers to try to find the answer. You need to know what the answer is first, right? Before you actually see the answers, at least have it in your mind. And then we say, well, maybe it'll be changed by another answer. And we'll see that in a little bit. Is everybody good with that one? Mm -hmm. KJ, I got confused with this one because it, although it says that they were sent the digital documents for their signatures, it didn't yeah. say that they actually signed. Yeah, so me too. 
on the yes. test, I put that it's not valid without a written signature because yeah. it doesn't state that they actually signed it. They were sent the document, but it doesn't say that they were actually they actually signed it. Okay, don't read. I agree. Yeah. This is, so this is one of the things that I teach, right? All questions. Does everybody, anybody in here, you've already taken the state, state exam. You're like, these, some of these questions ain't that clear, right? Does everybody agree? Like some of them are not yeah. that clear. You want to try to make sure that you're getting to the moral of the story. Yeah, because it says settled and before closing. Exactly. All right. Mm -hmm. So just get to the moral of the story. What is the story trying to tell us? What is it trying to get to? And yes, you said that it said that they sent it and it doesn't say they actually signed it. Mm -hmm. But before closing, you got to in this case, she must have signed it. Mm -hmm. Because had she not signed it, it wouldn't be an issue. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Y'all yeah. go good with me on that? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Thank you. We're not in contract. So you're trying to get to the moral of the story mm -hmm. and not try to read so much into it by saying, but it didn't say this. It didn't say that. And I don't like to use the word assumptions because I don't want you guys making an assumption. But in this case, you have to say, hey, it would not be an issue if she never signed the digit, not never signed it digitally, because they would never be in contract. Make sense to everybody? Uh -huh. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Good question. David entered into the contract for the purchase of 200 acres for 150,000 cash, no contingencies. He put down 10,000 and he set the closing date with the seller for three weeks from entering the contract. Prior to the three weeks, David decides he doesn't want to purchase the property because the neighbor is a sex offender. He terminates the contract and requests his earnest money back. Will he get any of his, let's read, will he get any of his money back? Okay, yeah. let's break this apart. Everybody agree he's in contract? Yes. Yes. Everybody yes. agree if he doesn't purchase, He's in breach. Yeah. Yes. If he doesn't yes. purchase, right? yes. okay. Does everybody agree that if you breach a contract, you could yes. lose your earnest money? Yes. Right. yes. So let's look at the answers here. This is one I want to look at because this is, mm -hmm. I made this one a little trickier because I want you to understand. Hopefully, you guys in KJ Method didn't even flinch. All right. But let's look. No, because no contingencies means there's no way to get out of a contract. <clears throat> True or false? Let's talk about it. That's false. That's that's true, I guess, to a, certain extent, to a certain extent. But the you sex offender to... would be a, I guess, not a material fact, but it would be a something that would depend on whether he closed or not, whether he wants. That's okay. a big I like big that, thing. Natasha, but here's the thing. No contingencies means there's no way to get out of the contract. Can't the contract allow him to get out of the contract? Yes. yes. In another way? So you don't want to be that absolute, Natasha. No way to get out of the contract. Does everybody understand why that's wrong? No contingencies means no way to get out of the contract. That is false. Is everybody good with that? Yes. 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 You guys sure? Yes. Right. Like good. Okay. Yes. No, the entire ten thousand is going to be considered a liquidated damage. That's true. That too. Could be true, right? Yeah. Could be true. Yes, since he would have a right to rescind. Is everybody good? C is no good. Not yeah, he can't rescind. Rescind and breach, not the same thing. Every every is everybody good to throw out C. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at D. Yes, if the contract language provides for it. No, no, yes. 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 That's true. The contract. Yes. Yeah. Is that everybody maybe. good that D is the winner? Yes. yes. Why is D the winner? Yes. Somebody tell me why D is the winner. 
because it has to be in writing. It has to be in writing in the contract. It has to be in writing. Right. Because yeah. I don't care what you know about contracts, God. I don't care what you know or what you think about contracts. The language of the contract always controls. It always controls. So even though B is decent, suppose the contract says, if you breach, I get to keep 5,000 in liquidated damages. Then B That's is B incorrect. Case. Yeah, then B is uh -huh. incorrect. Then yeah. B is incorrect. Is everybody good? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys yes. understand. All right, and so that's why it's deep. Question. KJ. Yes. KJ. Hi. Can you go back to number two? What was the final answer for number two? I'm sorry, I missed it. Two was um. Two was B. 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 Uh -huh. Contract is valid and enforceable because mm -hmm. of digital signatures. The digital mm -hmm. signatures are the same as written ones. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. You don't need an actual signature. And you guys know we use eSign dot loop all the time. We don't get actual signatures any longer. Mm -hmm. Is everybody good with why it's D on this one? Anyone mm -hmm. have any questions? Mm -hmm. Good. All right, let's go to four. John and Jerry are purchasing a condo from Susan. Right before the closing, Susan decides she doesn't want to sell, which is true. They can sue. They can sue. Susan wasn't an under an obligation to close, only pay liquidated damages. We don't know that to be true. Susan is not in default because there's never an obligation to sell one's property. Mm -hmm. That's false. That's false, right? If you're in contract, it means you're in contract. Mm -hmm. What is purchase and sale agreement? It means that I'm going to sell it and it means you're going to buy it. Right? That's mm -hmm. John and Jerry can sue for damages or specific performance, but not both. Yes. yes that's true. That's okay. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, John and Jerry and Susan can agree to rescind the contract so that Susan doesn't have to pay a commission. What do you guys think about that one? Mm -hmm. yeah. No. Tell no. Me She's still gonna pay a commission. I thought rescind was like an operation of law too. Of like, like what we did with the condos, you have seven days to rescind or something like that. Yeah, so they can get out of it. But what you want to get from D, that is absolutely right. Even if they rescind, even if they rescind, guys, does it mean that they wouldn't have to pay a commission? No, they still would. Mm -hmm. You are willing, able, right? They uh, they brought a um a willing and able buyer. buyer. Okay, great. So everybody in here mm -hmm. does understand that a deal does not have to close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's correct. 100%, mm -hmm. 100%, you understand yes. a deal does not have to close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, Crystal, you're absolutely right that rescission generally comes under operational law, but we can also mutually decide. Mm -hmm. We mutually just decide we ain't in it, right? You're not in it, you're not in it, but it does not affect the commission. That's the point that we're getting here. Is mm. everybody okay with that? Mm. Mm. Yes. Yeah. All right. If you please, we're 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 welcoming you to our live. Please ask questions if you don't understand. Mm. KJ, can you say that uh that last little bit one more time? About what the you just said? About the okay, so let's say you and I are in a contract together, right? And we have an agent, Crystal's our agent, right? So we're in a contract together and we decide we don't want to be in this contract. It doesn't affect Crystal's commission because when, once Crystal brought that ready, willing, and able buyer, she's entitled to a commission. So you guys could say, Yeah, let's get out of it. We deciding, let's get out of it, but it doesn't affect the commission. So what I want you to understand is deals do not have to close. They don't have to close. The commission is earned. That's the terminology we use. The commission is earned as soon as a ready, willing, and able buyer is brought. Okay? Got, Got it. it. Thank you. Got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. The answer was B. 
on that one? It was C. 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 Yeah, because they can sue, right? But you can yeah. sue for damages or you can sue for specific performance, but you can't sue for both. It's mm -hmm. one or the other. You got to make a choice. Okay. All right. David is interested in purchasing a parcel of real estate from Jeremiah, a commercial developer. Although David believes the price is good of 750, he's uncertain whether the property will work for his purposes. What would David's best offer? What would be David's best offer to make on the property? What should he do? Just by the scenario, what should pop into your head, guys? Option. 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 So Ooh. let's see if that's there. Let's see if that's there. All right. Offer to purchase an option. 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 Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. My point is, guys, mm -hmm. if you know this stuff well enough, you look at this scenario, right? That answer should be there, right? Because you know this stuff well enough. And so what did we pick out there? We're saying that he wants to buy it. He thinks the price is good, but he's not sure about if this property would work. Let's say, for example, he feels like he has to go to the zoning board. So he needs time. That's what he needs. He's not saying that the, the price is not good. So how do you get time, guys? Option. 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 Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So A doesn't work. Why would he offer less? He's saying that it's good. Offer a price that is what he is asking. We can't offer anything because we're still not sure right now. Mm -hmm. Offer to purchase it under a land contract. You should know a land contract is seller financing, right? And that's not what we're talking about here. So D makes the most sense. Mary is a seller. She has signed an exclusive right to sell. Ding, ding, ding. I need to know what that is. Listing agreement with Todd as a broker. Mary is seeking an offer of 400000 wants to close the sale in 30 days. Todd brings a buyer who offers three ninety and will close in 30 days. Mary agrees to that price, but at the closing, she fails to pay Todd. Todd sues. Will he win? I mean, we just kind of did this, right? <laughs> you guys yeah. did. Will he win? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So let's look at it. All right. Yes. Since Mary entered into a contract, even though it was for less than the asking price. But let's make sure that we got it down. So all we're saying here is that if you make an offer and even if it's less than the person wanted, once the person accepts that offer, now we got ready, willing and able to purchase. And so Todd's commission is going to kick in at that point. OK, anyone need another a b or c explained they picked a b or c i Did chose it? c and i i, I was torn between c and d and um yeah i know that now i i uh, yeah but you can break that's very good proof okay c would only be correct if we had an exclusive agency agency okay gotcha. is everybody good with that oh Right. Does because everybody the right to sale yeah. means that he was entitled to the um thing no matter if no matter anyway. What. Right. Anyway, okay. does okay. everybody have that? We can't miss these words, guys. These words are so important. If this said exclusive agency, then we know that C would be an issue. Mm. Okay. Are good? Yeah. Yes, thank you for explaining. I I chose C on the test as well, so thank you. Does everybody understand the difference between agency and right to sell? Yeah, yeah. right to sell. He gets paid no matter what who sells. Don't get that right? commission regardless. You ain't got to prove nothing. The mm -hmm. only thing you have to show on a right to sell is that the property did sell. That's all you got to show, right? This is when it's reading slowly. Like I just, I was, I read it and I was like, oh yeah, you know, I just need to read it. Should have reread it. You can't. Definitely. And that's the other thing why I try to get you guys. You know how you guys are a lot of time. What's the answer to this one? What's the answer? So suppose I change the question. Suppose the last time you saw this question, it said exclusive agency. And now I just decided to change it to exclusive right to sell, right? Mm -hmm. You get it wrong because you're trying to memorize an answer as opposed to careful reading, mm -hmm. all right? Everybody good on that one? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Seven, Abel is purchasing a home from Kurt. The party signed the contract on 310 and the closing is to occur on 5 2. 
on 4-1, Kurt learns that a new zoning ordinance allows the home to be used as commercial space and decides he no longer wants to sell. Abel still wants to buy the home and use it as a resident. And so he brings what type of lawsuit against Kurt? I'm not putting the answers. I want y'all to tell me. I was confused on this one, KJ. Okay, I no problem. So before, <laughs> so let's talk about what. So if he wants him to it? sell it, I know it he could do a performance. performance. It would be specific damages is money. But yeah, exactly. Performance. Look, the question clearly says to you, he still wants the house. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He still wants the house. If he still wants the house, there's only one way he's going to get it. What is that called? Specific performance. Specific performance. So let's talk about, let's look at the answers and then talk about it, okay? Isn't the first Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I thought somebody had a question. Okay, sue for damages. Is that going to get him the house? No. Hey, no. That's not going to get him a house. Sue for liquidated damages. Is that going to get him the house? No. no. For specific performance. Would that get him the yeah. house? Yes. No. Okay, yeah. let's yes. look at D, though. How many people pick D? I, I did. D. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did, too. All right. yeah. this, somebody tell me what's wrong with D. Let's discuss D. It says Abel won't be able to sue since the property can no longer be used as a residence. If you pick that, what did you miss? So it can also be a residence. It can be used as um, commercial, but it doesn't have to be used as commercial. Right. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't go backwards, guys. Mm -hmm. It only goes forward. So D is saying this house can't any longer be used as a residence. But is that true? No. no or not. is it could be used as commercial too? Yes. It can be used as commercial. Can be used as commercial also. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me on that? Yes. Yes. Who, who doesn't understand what I just said? Um, so, K KJ, I have a question. You guys asked. That's why we're here. Come so if, it, if the question read that um that it can only now be used for commercial that would be now that that would make the answer d right that would be different yeah that's but what that's is. not what it said because here's the thing if 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 you say only use right then you assume something all this says if this question is testing you that you understand new zoning ordinances do not affect the property already in existence isn't uh -huh. it used as residential? Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now they have a new zoning saying it could be used as commercial. Yeah? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I get it now. Okay. Residential and commercial. Okay. Everybody get that? Yeah. Yes, yeah. If, I think, if, I think, if the yeah. word variance was in this question, would that change anything? That a new zoning ordinance allows the home to be used as commercial? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Doesn't change anything. Everybody good with me on that one? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. the, 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 you know, what I'm really trying to get all of you guys is careful reading. The words mm -hmm. are there. They mm -hmm. are for you, I promise you. Mm -hmm. But you just do this interpretive stuff. You throw your own words in there. Rather than, it says there's a zoning ordinance. Zoning ordinance, what you know about zoning is that it doesn't change the status of the past. It only changes the status moving forward, right? And so that means, let me back up. Let me say it this way. If zoning changes on a property, this property, can um, Abel still use it as a residence? Yes, because it would be yes. a farming property, right? That's why D is wrong. Mm. You got that it? is why it's wrong. Yeah, I see. Okay. okay. Are good with me yeah. now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me okay? I had a quick question before we move on. I mean, oh, well, yeah. move on. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, I don't know if you mentioned this already, but what would make this question like for B to be the answer? Look, um, being sued for liquidated damages, what uh in the question would need to make that? 
for liquidated yes. damages. It could be something yes. that is in the contract already. Like, let's say it said um, he gave him $5,000 and the contract had some clause in there that he could keep the money. Because liquidated damages, remember, guys, mm -hmm. what is the definition of it? It is an amount that you already know what the cost of the breach is going to be. Uh, you already okay. know it, right? Because we put it in the contract. So, so Mark, for what you owe, do you already owe this based on the contract? Based on the contract. Liquidated okay. damages is only ever based on the contract because we put it in the contract ahead of time. We're Thank saying you. this. If you breach, this is what it's going to cost you. So you already know how much the breach is going to cost you. You already know it. Okay? okay. Who else had a question? Would it be liquidated damage if there was an exchange of funds, any money between no, the parties? Because suppose the contract has no liquidated damages clause. Mm. Real estate, we understand liquidated damages to be what? Oh, I know this. Um, in real estate, it's your real estate yeah. contract. It's money. Liquidated it's, yeah. damages, money. It's your earnest exactly. money, right? Earnest mm -hmm. money, right? Suppose that didn't say that. <laughs> Suppose it didn't say that. Then we don't have the liquidated damages. Does that make sense? Liquidated damages must be stated in the contract. Mm. Damages is something that the court awards. Liquidated damages. That's why we call it something different. Mm -hmm. Liquidated damages is like we wrote it in there and we said if you breach this contract, remember the guy a little while ago with ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars? Mm -hmm. Oh, he would lose the ten. Mm -hmm. oh, only if the contract said he would lose the ten. The contract could say if you breach it, you'll lose two thousand. Does that make sense? Yeah. It could say you lose three thousand. It could say you lose nothing. It could say anything. Okay, so understand liquidated damages always is written into the contract, always written into the contract. Okay. Right. Fareed is purchasing a home from Mara. He has done all inspections and cleared all contingencies. His bank has issued a clear to close on December 24th, which is exactly three weeks from today. He also received a call that an out-of-state job that he previously applied for wants to hire him. He's considering taking the job, but he does not want to lose the money he already paid to Mara. He considers transferring his contract over to his friend. Can he do it? What is that called? You guys should know. Is that, is that an assignment? Assignment. That's an assignment all day long. And what's the rule relating to assignments? Can you assign? That you can if, that you yeah. can if it's in the country. Would it have to be like, a con I guess not a contingency, but it would have to be some kind of language in the country that you can't assign yeah. it to someone? Mm -hmm. That you can't. That you can't. So you're right, Natasha. That's very good. We say that all contracts are assignable unless they're not. Mm -hmm. not means the contract says no assignments okay we got that so now that we got that as our answers it says yes he can and he doesn't need mara's permission to do so that that's true. true right mm -hmm. no he can't he must complete the transaction awesome. yes mm -hmm. he could if his contract with mara allows it that's what I said. Yeah. That's what I found. That's what I found. No, because three be weeks is not enough time. That's not. See. Right. Everybody like, see? That's yeah. what I feel yes. like. Yeah. Very good. I agree. Guys, I really want you to really understand what contracts. Look, the state just increased the contracts from 18 to 19. 19 mm -hmm. contract questions, right? Mm -hmm. And so you got to understand a lot of contracts is just what we negotiate. Yeah, we got the, the it got to have consideration. It got to have validity. It has to have this. But a lot of it is what we negotiate, right? And mm -hmm. so um, if that contract allows it, then he's good to go. Yeah. Does it? And you don't need consent. If your contract allows it, you don't need to ask anyone. All right? AJ, question mm -hmm. on that too. Could if, if he didn't know he was going to get the job or take another job or whatever, could he just add an addendum to the contract and move forward with it to let his friend um, James buy it, take over the contract? Mm, hey, let me, okay, let me, let me, let me, I'm going to say a couple of things to you, but I want you to say it to me again. So okay. I can answer it. 
So, okay. So we have the contract and it's 30 days out. Okay. So all of a sudden Fareed gets this call from this great job offer in New York. And he's like, man, I can't turn this down. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got three weeks out. Can he do an addendum to the contract? So his friends, his boy, James can come in and get the con the, the house. Cause James is like, that's a, that's a, I love that house. That, that house is dope. Okay. Let's go back and make an addendum so you can get the contract. Cause it wasn't in the contract initially. No, no, um, okay. we do not do assignments by addendum. Okay. There's no way to do it. First of all, let's make sure we got all of this language we putting together. All right. No, addendum. A couple of things, y'all. So with this test, I want y'all to always stick to the things that you learned and you know, right? Don't <laughs> like kind of be out here. <laughs> you pass, you could be wherever you want to be. All right. Mm -hmm. One stay where you this situation is an assignment. That's the one thing. Number two, we never assign contracts by addendum. Number okay. three, if anything, it wouldn't be an addendum, it would be an amendment. Amendment. Okay. Let's make sure we got all those right. Things. The change. So an addendum happens after the of the contract to mm -hmm. explain the contract. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change the contract. It explains the underlying contract. Okay. 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 Everybody agree this would be a change, a big change. So amendment. if okay. we did it this way, we would do it by amendment, not addenda, because an amendment okay. means change. It changes. Right. But uh, but understand this: we would not do an addenda or an amendment. We would do an assignment. Why? Because the way an assignment is done, guys. But you guys also don't know, um, I should have introduced myself. I'm also an attorney. I've been an attorney 25 years. I practice real estate law. And so I know this stuff like the back of my hand. Um, assignment means all. Everybody agree. Assignment means you taking over everything I got. Everybody good? Yeah. All yeah. we do is, you know that underlying contract? We like here, yeah, it's yours. And then we just put one piece of paper on top of it that says, I'm assigning it to you. Everything here is yours. And then we're gonna put a piece of paper on top of it called an assignment agreement. So we don't addend it, we don't amend it, we don't change it. Basically, an assignment means you getting what I got. Mm -hmm. it. All right. And so that's all we're going to do is hand you that contract and we're going to put one more piece of paper on the top of it that says I am assigning my contract that I signed on whatever day to you. All right. That's that's it. So is he trying to get a new realtor or is he just like what exactly is he doing when he said he transferred his contract over to his friend? Is he getting someone to buy? Is he buying a house in another state or like what is he doing? going to take the job he's going to leave so really what you're trying to get from this is an assignment could come in any situation guys it could come in any situation but this is what you're trying to get from it if you are in we just talked about liquidated damages right you guys realize if you paid ten thousand dollars down and you gonna you don't want to close you're gonna lose your ten thousand let's just assume that everybody good with that mm-hmm but lose your money. You don't want to lose your money. So how could you avoid losing your money? You could let somebody else buy the house in um, your place. That's mm -hmm. what an assignment is. And so it Can doesn't matter. question? Yeah, one second. It doesn't matter if they give you, you going to a new job. It doesn't matter if you like, I just don't want to buy it. It doesn't matter if you like, mm -hmm. I'm moving to another country or I decided to buy another house. So yeah. the scenario doesn't matter. What matters is you are in it. You're going to lose your money. And you're like, mm, I need to find somebody else to step into my okay. shoes. Okay. Mm -hmm. gotcha. That would be an assignment. And, okay. and since we're on the topic, understand, an assignment would always be not coming back. You're going to just give them everything that you have. That is an assignment. Okay. okay. Someone else question just now? Yes. I wanted to know how does that prevent them from losing money that they already paid? Does the friend have to give them the ten thousand dollars now? The friend would give them the ten thousand. Okay, got you. You got it. The friend gives yes, them. Yes, ma'am. 
thousand and then pays the balance to the seller, just like this person was going to do. So it's so just now, like you is. found the willing and able buyer. Say that again. It's like you found the willing and able mm -hmm. buyer. Uh, the if this was a commission question, the commission was already earned. Mm -hmm. Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Earlier? This person was clear to close. He's in it. He's stuck. So the commission was already earned on this one. All right. Make sure that you guys understand what we're saying. The difference between contract, agency, commissions, all different rules relating to all of them. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So so an so a contract is always open to be assigned, correct? A contract is always assignable unless the language says it can't be assigned. Okay, so then if a contract is always open to be assigned, right? So then we could assume that this contract have no clause in there stating that it cannot be assigned. We can't assume that. We need to see what the contract says. Okay, so in that the contract sense, allows it. So in that sense, um, so why the answer can it be a? Right, because we don't know if there's anything in there. So why can't the answer kind of just be A? That you can C says, because C suggests you have to look at the contract to know. A is making an assumption that the contract okay. does say it or doesn't. Okay. Okay, you okay, cannot do that. You got to look at the contract to know. Okay. To okay. answer it. Does that make sense? Like yeah, the okay. contract is going to tell us what the answer really is. Okay. okay? The rule is... Let's look at the contract. Like all contracts are assignable unless it prevents it. So gotcha. the best, and that's one of the things that we teach a lot in KJ Method, look at the contract because the contract really gives you a lot of the answers as to what, what it is, even though you have the rule in your head. Thank you. No problem. What is meant by the term consideration in a contract? Exchange something of value by exchange. Both exchange parties. Value. I like it. I like it. Right. And there you go. Each party agrees to give up something of value in exchange. And so where students get always caught on these is um, there has been a meeting of the minds. No, that is mutual assent. That has nothing to do with consideration. The parties agree that there will be money. Does consideration have to be money? No. No, no it does not. They agree that it will be services. Does it have to be services? No. Oh, it just has to be somebody giving up something of value, somebody giving up something of value. That's all it means. The value, we don't care what it is. And we don't care, we don't care the value or what it is. All right. And so okay. that is the definition of consideration. Last one. Jovan is about to purchase a home from Nate. During the contract, the county informs Nate that it will be part of the property to build the playground for the adjacent school they're building, but at a price well below the amount that Javon is purchasing the property for. Javon notes that he no longer has to purchase the property because he doesn't want to be near a school. Nate sues Javon for specific performance. The most probable result is, before we move on, what is this situation describing? Is this in a domain? That's economic obsolescence, right? So everybody feel like this is eminent domain? Yes. yes. Okay. And so what do we know about eminent domain? When there is an eminent domain, that, that's a taking, right? A taking? Yep. A property? Private use. So, Private use. Taking. Okay. Yeah. It's a taking. And so what is a taking of property now called? Resigning. Resigning. It's condemnation. It? Condemnation. Condemnation. It's condemnation, but it's called something. It's an example of something. What happens if you buy in a assess, property assess, assess, assess. and take it? I'm sorry, say that again, KJ. What happens if you are buying a property and this property is now taken? Can you buy it? Supervening illegality. Supervening illegality. That's exactly what it is. Let's say it again and make sure you guys understand. If, if you were in, let's say I'm going to buy this house right here. I love this house. I'm getting ready to buy the house. I'm getting ready to close on it in a month. The government takes it. Can I buy it? No. No, the government takes it. Y'all with no. me, guys? 
Mm-hmm. Let me say it again. I'm going, come on, don't, don't fall asleep on me now. I'm mm-hmm. going to buy a house. Mm-hmm. And right before I close, I'm going to buy it in a month. The government takes that property under eminent domain. Can I now buy it? No, no, no. Because it's gone. It's, it's taken. Gone. It's impossible right. for me to now buy it. Everybody Correct. good? Correct. That is called a supervening illegality. Mm. Supervening illegality. The definition of a supervening illegality is when you're going to do something and now you can't do it any longer because the law steps in and says it's illegal or impossible to do. Mm. Everybody got me? Mm-hmm. Can yeah, you yeah. write that? Can you write the name of that down in the chat? It's right there. Hey. Oh, there it is. Mm-hmm. Supervening illegality. Okay, I got you. Right? Supervening illegality. Meaning you were gonna do something and, and you're good. You get ready to do it. But then there's a change in the law that prevents you from doing it, all right? It's a supervening illegality. Everybody got that one? hmm Okay, cool. That's all you're looking for. Like, broad base, you're going to do it. It's good. You're going to do it. There's a change in the law. That is called a supervening illegality. All right. That is it for the live session. Um, at least for at least for the uh, test. Um, if you are a KJ Method uh, member and you want to stick around, stick around. If you have a question, ask it. If you're a non-member and you have questions that you want me to answer for you, um, please feel free. Raise your hand. I'm willing to stay and answer um, some questions uh, for you.